of your pastor and first lady. They're good people. They love you. They love this church. They love this community. And they want to see a move of God. Thank God for a pastor that isn't just satisfied maintaining. Now he's a pastor. He'll pastor all of you to the rapture or until you leave or he leaves. But his heart is more than just maintaining. He wants to see this community turned upside down with a move of God. Amen? Thank God for pastors like that. And you're going to see it. You're going to see it. You're already beginning to see it. But you're going to see it. Why not this week, right? Oh, why not this week? Hallelujah. I'll tell you what. The Lord is moving right now. Um, I need everybody to just pray for just a minute. I want us to just... I want us to just thank him before he does anything. He's worthy of the praise. Come on, we thank you right now, Lord. Come on, would you just lift up your voice and vocalize your praise right now. Come on, I want your ears to be able to hear what your mouth is saying tonight. Come on, we don't adapt to atmospheres, we change atmospheres. Paul and Silas didn't praise God because he showed up. God showed up because they praised him. So let's just praise him right now and give him all the glory. It is yours, Lord. And we thank you now for every salvation. We thank you for every healing. We thank you for every miracle. We thank you for every deliverance. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I thank you right now in the name of Jesus for what you're going to do, Lord. And I give you glory for it right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I'm sorry when I was talking about your pastor, the Holy Spirit just spoke to me and said, I'm healing someone right now of a blood disorder. I don't know. And this is very odd for me. Normally this, this doesn't happen, but somebody in this place that has a blood disorder, something with your blood tonight. I want to know where you're at. Something in your blood tonight. I don't know what it is. Diabetes maybe, whatever it is. Yes, brother. Who else? Is there anyone else tonight? God, I, I, I'm telling you, this is the Lord. I just uh, I, I, I was trying to sing your pastor's praises and the Holy Spirit says, I'm healing someone right now. Raise your hand if you have some kind of blood disorder. I don't even know what it is, but Lord knows he's taking care of it right now. I pray that healing would flow right now and touch every blood disorder in Jesus' name. Leukemia, we rebuke you. Diabetes, we rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, I thank you that that blood is being healed and it's flowing through that body right now. And I thank you, Lord, there's no blockages that's keeping it from flowing through that body. So in the name of Jesus, if that's you, just take it right now. Claim your healing and give him the praise for it. Hallelujah. You're worthy, Lord Jesus. You're worthy. Glorify his name. Hallelujah. I don't know what's going to happen tonight. I thought I had a plan, and the Holy Ghost messed it all up. Amen. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. So good to see you folks. Man, we were together in the middle of COVID. Y'all remember that? November? I mean, a lot of you weren't even here. It was COVID. And uh, I tell you, God moved in this place. We started the first night with about this many people, maybe not even. By the last night, this place was packed. How many of you remember that? You remember that? I remember preaching that last night a message. Um, I say I remember. I don't even remember the title. But I, I remember it was a soul-winning message on the coming of the Lord. And I don't know if you remember, but there were people from almost one end to the other that responded to that altar call that night and gave their heart to Jesus Christ. How many of you remember that? Amen. Can he do it again? Can he do it again? Yes, he can. There were miracles. Matter of fact, the Lord healed me in this revival back in November. I don't know if you remember, I was struggling with my voice. And uh, on that last night, that last day, I told my daughter who was here with me, I said, I said, if the Lord doesn't touch it, there is no way I'm preaching tonight. 
And some of you got around me before service, and the Lord healed my voice. I'd been struggling for several weeks with my voice, and uh, the enemy was trying to take away my voice, but the Lord touched me sitting right there on that Tuesday night. And I was thinking about this driving up today. I was thinking, if the Lord moved as powerfully as he moved in the middle of COVID and shutdown and all those things, what can he do these three nights together? Amen? I'm believing for it. Hallelujah. I'm believing for it. Good to see my friends. I, I, you know, you got a push hoodie from Tag Church, so got some Tag merchandise. Good to see you guys as always here tonight, and got some more friends going to be joining us tomorrow night, and uh, just really expecting and believing. Thanks, Pastor, for having our ministry back again. You know, I asked Pastor Carl uh, last time we was together, we went to lunch on Monday, and I said, were you happy with last night? You okay with everything? And he was smiling ear to ear, and he said, oh yeah, oh yeah. And I asked him that because I'm under his submission, and I wanted to make sure that everything was in line. And um, I'll tell you, I hope we have some more ear-to-ear -ear smiling before these few days are, are over of what the Lord has done. Hey, amen. Glory to his name. Well, um, a little bit different. How many of you know that's the thing about Pentecost? Every service is different. You can't predict them. It's, it's different every time. That's why you don't want to miss any night, all three nights, because to not, tomorrow night won't be the same as tonight. Tuesday night won't be the same as Sunday and Monday nights. You need to be here. It's a partnership. I believe this. When you're in revival, it's a partnership with the pulpit and the pew. Amen? And we've got to work together. Uh, we've got to come and, and be faithful. I know that you will. And invite people. But again, no night will be the same. If the Holy Spirit, unless he changes direction, on Tuesday night, we're going to have a miracle service here. The Lord uh, has is directing me at this point to preach a message uh, that I have preached many times. And, um, you know, uh, sometimes people say, well, why do you keep preaching that same message? Because it works. And I found if you find something that works, stick with it. You know, I've always wondered why in a healing service do some get healed and some don't? Why will some come and step out of their wheelchair and push their wheelchair home, whereas others will come in a wheelchair and they'll roll home in their wheelchair? And I don't have the answer to that. I'm not going to pretend I do. If I did, I could write a book and make a lot of money. Amen. But the Lord has given me some revelation and some insight that really has helped in that area. And matter of fact, the message I'm going to bring to this house Tuesday night is a message where we have literally seen, when preaching it, it's the Lord's work, but we've literally seen in that service multiple times every person in the building receive their healing. This message works. It brings a revelation to healing. I'm, I promise you, I don't care how many messages you've heard on preaching or, on, or preached on healing, you will have never heard what I'm going to share with you. And it's not because it's not in the Bible. It's there, and the Lord's just showing it to us. So that's Tuesday night. Come expecting, come believing. God's going to do great and mighty things. I have no doubt about it. But tonight and tomorrow night is going to be different from Tuesday in this way. Unless the Lord changes direction tomorrow night, I really have felt, been fasting and praying for the meetings tonight and tomorrow night, and I have really felt the Lord speaking to my heart to deposit into Life Church and into the revival that He is bringing to this community. And yeah, so I have to say, it, 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 the messages may not be like last time. You know, they're, they're not always a one size fits all. How many of you know sometimes a message is for one person? And, 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 and we're going to have visitors. There's some tonight, I'm sure. There'll be some tomorrow night. And God's going to speak to them. And, and if they're here hungry for revival, he's going to move in their life, no doubt about it. But I say all of that to say this. Life Church, these messages tonight and tomorrow night, if they're for no one else, they're for you. They're for the DNA of this church body. They're for your future. 
I wish we had a few more nights. Because even though Tuesday night I'm preaching a message I've preached a hundred times, tonight and tomorrow night I'm preaching something tomorrow night that I've never preached, ever. Tonight, something that the Lord just gave me for our church in Little Rock. So it's fresh. Tonight, tomorrow night's fresh. Matter of fact, even today, the Lord was downloading more into my spirit about tonight's message. And what he's been speaking to me deals with the challenges to a revival culture. Now, you're going to stay with me, and I'll help you understand that in just a moment. There are five ancient spirits. There's five spirits in the Old Testament that the Lord's been showing me are hindrances to maintaining revival atmosphere and a revival culture. When I said I wish we had more nights, it's because there's no way this long-winded preacher is going to get through all five of them in two nights. I may not even get through one tonight. Who knows? We're going to let the Holy Spirit get out what he wants to get out. Amen? But I, I, I want to I kind of set the foundation before we open our Bibles and jump into this together. I want to set the foundation to let you kind of get a peek into what God has been doing in our church we pastor TAG Church. TAG stands for Trinity Assembly of God. It's in Little Rock on the west side of the city. We've been there just a little over seven years ago, uh, seven years now. And uh, when we went, right before we went, the Lord spoke to my heart, and he began to move upon my heart that he was sending us to the city of Little Rock to pastor a move of God that we would go there and that God was going to send revival. Now you got to understand, seven years ago, my mindset of revival was very limited. I grew up in the assemblies of God, and my mindset of revival was this. Revival was when an evangelist came into town once, maybe twice a year, maybe a fall camp meeting in a spring. He came and stayed a few nights. The church got excited while he was there. They invited people. People were being saved. Worship seemed to just catch on fire. The church was excited about Jesus. And that stayed with the church for a couple more weeks. But after a few weeks, you see, it's like the church would just go right back to where it was before revival. How many of you know what I'm talking about tonight? It's almost like we lived on these highs. We called them revival. We couldn't wait till our favorite evangelist came through town. We couldn't wait for revival services. We had church like never before. It stayed with us for a few weeks, maybe a month even. But then down the road, we went right back to the way it's always been. That was my mindset, like it is for many of you, of what revival was. And revival, the understanding did not begin to change for me until God sent a move of God to Little Rock, where we pastor, in 2014. When we showed up to Little Rock, we were elected by about 50-something people. Most of them were old enough to be my grandparents. Matter of fact, our church, if God hadn't have sent revival, would have been half the size, Carl, a year later because I buried half the people that elected me in the first year I was there. Matter of fact, I had one lady tell me at a funeral dinner, she said, don't touch me because ever since you've been here, everybody around you is falling over dead. I want you to see that seven years ago, the church was about 50-something people on a good Sunday. Many of them were on their way to heaven, and we were believing God for a word that he gave us when he sent us to the city that he was going to send revival. Again, our understanding was limited. We didn't know what that looked like. But over the last seven years, we begin to see, because when revival hit seven years ago, it didn't go away. Are you hearing me? 
It did not leave. For seven years we've been in, what the Lord's been showing me, sustained revival. The church has continued to grow. It's continued to experience the manifestations of the power of God. It has not let up. If anything, the fire gets hotter and hotter and hotter. This morning we had one of the most powerful services we've had in seven years. It just continues to increase. So what the Lord began to show me that I wish seven years ago there was an evangelist that came to my church and taught me and taught our church is the Lord has shown me over the last few years that revival is birth, but his will is for it to be sustained and for revival to be sustained, it must be cultivated. Are you hearing me tonight? Revival must be birthed by the Holy Spirit. It must be cultivated by us. That's what we're doing tonight. That's what we're doing these next few nights is we're cultivating a revival culture here at Life Church. Come on somebody. We are cultivating an atmosphere of revival because it is our desire and I believe the heart of God for revival to be sustained. Are you hearing me? Now sustained revival requires strategic outpourings. There is an initial outpouring that happens, and I'm talking corporately and individually in your life. There is that first outpouring or that first revival, but but, but sustained revival requires initial outpourings, strategic outpourings. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying we can't keep living in the revival uh, from seven years ago. We can't keep living in the revival from November, hello, or from last month. Are you with me today? We need more. We need something new. We need something fresh. Revival requires constant pursuit. Turn to your neighbor and say, constant pursuit. In other words, we don't stop praying. We don't stop praising. We don't stop pursuing. I have found the very things that are required to birth a revival are the very things required to sustain a revival. If revival is only birthed through prayer, it can only be sustained through prayer. Hear me today. If revival is only birthed through hunger, it will only be sustained through hunger. It doesn't matter how mighty the revival was five years ago. If we don't sustain it through prayer and hunger, and I could give you a list of other things, we're going to go right back to where we always used to live. But revival requires constant pursuit. Now, I don't want to offend you tonight, but I ain't even started preaching yet, okay? I asked you if I could set the stage here, lay the foundation. You know, most revivals, if you study them in history, they only last three to five years. Azusa Street was a three-year revival. Turn of the century, one of the greatest revivals ever, three years. The Brownsville revival that broke out in Pensacola, Florida in 1995 was five to seven years. We long, hear me, Life Church, for revival culture. A revival culture is something that you are. We're not just trying to have revival. We're trying to become revival. You didn't go to revival tonight. You are revival. Revival is not something all of my life, all I've heard is, well, revival's just around the corner. Oh, we're about to see revival. No, no, no. It's not around the corner. Revival is here. Revival is now. Are you with me? tonight. So Charles Finney, the father of modern revival, he saw so much revival in his day and in his ministry that he came to this conclusion. He said revival is normal. So I'm on assignment. Everybody say assignment. I'm on assignment at least tonight and tomorrow night to speak into the revival culture that God is birthing in this house and to help us understand how we are to sustain it. Are you okay with that? Take your Bibles and open them to Matthew chapter 11. I'm preaching now. You can start the clock now. The rest of that was free. Amen. Matthew chapter number 11. Matthew chapter 11. I'm going to read and show you a scripture tonight that so many of us have read a million times. 
yet we've really never taken time to understand what Red Letter, what Jesus is saying here about John the Baptist and about the kingdom of heaven. The Lord gave me this passage, opened it up to me a few weeks ago. I was praying, fasting, and asking the Lord to show me through His Word revival. Anything that is, that is going to help us sustain the move of God and create a revival culture in our church. And this is a passage the Lord brought me to. And I believe after we preach it tonight, you'll never see it again. You'll never see it the same again. Look at it with me beginning in verse 1 of Matthew chapter number 11. When Jesus had finished instructing his 12 disciples, he went on from there to teach and to preach. How many of you know we need teaching and preaching? And now when John heard in prison about the deeds of the Christ, he sent word by his disciples, and he said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? And Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up. There's revival right there. And the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. Don't close your Bibles. Look up here for just a second before we finish reading. The Lord says... The blind are seeing, the lame are walking, the deaf are hearing. Revival is in the midst. But then he adds a blessing. He adds a beatitude where he says in verse 6, Blessed is the one who is not offended by me. How many of you know revival will bring offense? Revival will offend the religious crowd. Revival will offend the religious spirit. There is, a, there is a spirit in the church today. After seven years of sustained revival, I still encounter it at Tag Church. We'll encounter it here. I don't care what church you walk into. There is a religious spirit that is offended by everything that Jesus does and everything that he wants to do. I'm telling you, there's a spirit spirit that gets offended when people start worshiping like we ought to be worshiping. People will get offended over anything and everything. Pay attention. Jesus says, blessed is the one who doesn't get offended by me. Verse 7, as they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds concerning John. And here's what he says. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed Shaken by the wind, what then did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? Behold, those who wear soft clothing are in the king's house. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. Can I ask you tonight, what did you come to revival to see? What did you come to Life Church tonight to see? What do the people that walk through these doors come to see? He said, what did you go out in the wilderness to see? And then he says in verse 10, this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. Hear me, forerunners of revival. Bible. There is a preparing before the move of God. There must be a people, there must be a church that will pave the way for God to show up. There must be some forerunners of revival, some trailblazers who will say, I'll make a way for God to move in my church. I'll praise him into the house. I'll worship the glory down. Come on somebody. I will be a forerunner of revival. And read on. He says in verse 11, true I say to you, among those born of women, there has arisen no one greater than John the Baptist. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Don't miss verse 12. This is the one many of us in our Bible reading, we skip right over. We think, what in the world does this mean? And we don't take the time to look into it. We're going to do it tonight. Verse 12, from the days of John the Baptist until now. Somebody shout, until now. 
until right now the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence and the violent take it by force. Let me read that again. Jesus said, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence and the violent take it by force. We don't like that verse because we're supposed to be against violence and here Jesus is saying that it takes violence to take the kingdom by force. We're going to break this scripture down tonight as I preach on overcoming challenges to a revival culture. We're going to look at challenges to a revival culture. When Jesus described John the Baptist, he was giving the characteristics of a forerunner generation that goes before any move of God. Jesus was saying, when you went out to the wilderness, what did you expect to see? He even asked, did you go out to see a reed shaken by the wind? Hear me tonight, Life Church. Reeds blow in the wind because they have no backbone and they do whatever the wind wants. Reeds blow whichever way the wind moves them to blow. If the, if the wind moves this way, the reed moves this way. If the wind's blowing this way, the reed, the reed moves that way because they have no backbone. So when he's talking about, red letter, a reed shaken in the wind, he's talking about a spineless person who as soon as adversity or as soon as challenge Challenges come their way, they change direction. Hear me today. Most everybody I preach to wants revival. But one thing I've learned in seven years about a move of God is that the move of God is a magnet for spiritual warfare. If you want a move of God in Humansville, if you want to see this church filled to capacity with people being saved and filled with the Spirit, I can promise you it's going to draw great spiritual spiritual warfare. But the Lord says here that the kingdom of God, it's going to suffer some violence, but the violent ones, that means the intense ones, they're going to take it by force. I'm looking for some people tonight who's going to say, I am not going to be a spineless person. I'm not going to just follow the direction of the wind. We got enough preachers in our pulpits who they follow the next growth movement. They follow the next this, the next that I'm looking for some preachers, some prophets who have a backbone who will fill our pulpits and say, no, 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 there's only one way, there's only one way, are you hearing me? I'm looking for a church that will get a backbone, who will get a spine, and who will say when adversity comes and when challenges come, you're not going to see me go in the direction of falling out and saying, forget this, no sir, no more, I'm going to fight the good fight. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go after revival with everything inside of me. Jesus made the point that the kingdom of heaven will be violently opposed. So we need a violent resolve to take hold of it. We need an intensity that the church has lost. One of the first challenges to a revival culture one of the first challenges to come into a culture of revival, hear me, is getting past the fear of man and the tool of intimidation. Come on. I ain't even warmed up yet. We live in a culture that tells us we must be politically correct. We live in a, in a world today that tells us uh, uh, there's so much I could preach right here. I'll tell you, I could just, I could take off right here and, and may never end up back to my notes. I don't know. We live in a culture today that tells us uh, you, uh, you, you can't preach that. You, you can't do that. You can't say that. It doesn't line up with the culture of this world. I've got news for you, White House. I've got news for you, Washington, D.C. I am not a reed shaken in the wind. I have a backbone, and it's called the Holy Ghost. I have a spine. I want you to know, you may come, and you may say, listen, you got to let men use the women's restroom, and you've got to let women use the men's restroom, 
And if you don't, we'll take away your nonprofit tax exempt. I say have the tax exempt status because there ain't no men in my church going to go into the women's restroom. And if I find a man in the women's restroom, I'm going to kick you to the curb. Are you hearing me today? We need to get a backbone because our culture says you must be politically correct. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm not a weed shaking in the wind. I'm not easily blown away or intimidated by this world. How many of you know there's a, a, there's a political spirit trying to intimidate the church today? And it has gained momentum with COVID. I'll tell you, out in California at their district council, a friend of mine went out and spoke in their district council. He said it was depressing. They've shut down, I forget how many churches most of the pastors have not, still have not reopened their churches out there. They're passing laws you can't sing. Hear me today. Come tell me I can't sing. Come tell me we need to shut our doors. Come tell me I can't preach. Are you hearing me today? Oh yes, there is a, there is a, there is a, uh, the kingdom of God suffers violence. They'll tell you, you can't preach that homosexuality is a sin. I'm going to tell you today, friend, as long as this Bible says it's a sin, I'm going to preach it's a sin. As long as it says, thus saith the Lord, I'm going to have a backbone and say, thus saith the Lord. Y'all still with me? We live in a church culture, not just a culture in this revival but, or, or in this world, but we live in a church culture today in America that tells us revival is old school. Services like these are old-fashioned. Preaching like this is, you can't grow a church preaching like that. I had a pastor, Assembly God pastor, tell me, he asked me, he said, y'all services on Sunday mornings, they go three hours long. How do you have a three-hour service? We, we, we have worship, announcements, offering, preaching, and we pray for people. And we're out in 50 minutes, no more than an hour. How do y'all go for, what do y'all do for three hours? I said, what do you not do for 50 minutes? I tell our people we have a start time, but we don't have a finish time. Whenever the Holy Ghost is done, we're done. Hey, hey. He said, he said, what you do for, how do you get people to stay with you? I'm going to tell you this morning, I had to shut it down because I had to get on the road. I just literally, I had somebody call me on the way up. They said, Pastor, you shut it down too soon. But here's the thing. At 1 o'clock when I shut it down today, there was still 100% of our people in the altars jumping, shouting, praising. When I say shut it down, I ain't talking about, well, y'all need to wake up from y'all's Sunday nap and go on home. I'm talking about saying, y'all got to take your praise on out the door. Somebody's got to shut the lights off, and we got to shut the door, and we got to go home. Are you hearing me tonight? Well, I'm trying to help you understand. There is a, there is a, there is a, in, in, in today's church world, there is a pressure to say, no, you need us to bring it down. You, you can't, you can't have, you, you, listen, I, pastor, this will help you. I quit worrying about trying to pastor a big church a long time ago. God hasn't called me to pastor a big church. Mega churches, hey, they're great. But what God has given me is a mega mantle. A mega mantle, a mega calling. I'm telling you, I'm telling you today, church, I've had people say, well, if you really want to grow a church, you can't be preaching that kind of stuff. If you really want to grow a church, you, you got to let people out in like in an hour. Excuse me. Those people sit at ball games. Those people sit in movie theaters. Those people say we can't sit in church for a couple hours, but we can go to a ball game for two, three, four hours. We can go to the movies for a few hours. Hear me today. The problem is that church being too long. The problem is most people sitting in the church today would rather be at the ball game rather than the house of the Lord. Why? Because it's dead. It's dry. But when we see revival, when we see a move of God, you'll have to tell people to leave the doors. You'll have to tell people church is over whether you want it to be or not. But the church culture today tells us revival's old school. It's old fashioned. It's not relevant, Pastor. It's not cutting edge. I'm not a reed shaking in the wind. 
I'm not a reed shaken in the wind. I don't easily bow down to the pressures of the world or the pressure that the church culture is putting on us to not pursue the move of God. I'm not bowing down and I'm preaching to anybody today. Overcoming challenges to a revival culture. Let me give you one of them that we must overcome. And that's the spirit of Amek. I want you to turn in your Bibles to Numbers 13. The spirit of Anak, if you're taking notes, A-N-A-K. A-N-A-K, Numbers chapter 13. Preaching on overcoming challenges to a revival culture. If we're going to sustain revival, Life Church, if we're going to see a move of God hit this community, if we're going to see what we've been praying for, and even when we do see it, there will be a spirit called the spirit of Anak. The Lord's been speaking five different spirits to me. And I don't know, we'll get through a couple of them hopefully over the next few nights. But this one tonight, this one right here, we've got to learn. If we're going to be in sustained revival and cultivate a move of God, we're going to have to learn how to overcome the spirit of Anak. Numbers chapter 13 in your Bible. Let's look at this. It says that the Lord spoke to Moses saying, uh, let, let's start in verse 25. Save some time. This Verse 25. You, you know the context of the scripture. The spies are being sent into Canaan. The Lord speaking to Moses here in verse 1, verse 2, to send them to the land of Canaan, the land that he's giving his people Israel. But let's pick up in verse 25 where they come back from spying on this land it says in verse number 25 it says at the end of 40 days they returned from spying out the land and they came to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation of the people of Israel in the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh and they brought back word to them and to all the congregation and they showed them the fruit of the land hear this they brought back word and they said you got to see the fruit that they're growing over there. I mean, this stuff is delicious. It's juicy. It's big. It's great. Verse 27, they told them, we came to the land to which you sent us. You got to hear about it. Pastor Moses, it flows with milk and with honey. And this is its fruit. Hear it. This is its fruit. They brought some back. You got to see this stuff. It's flowing with milk and honey. Check out this fruit. Verse 28, however. Somebody say however. As good as it was. Now we have a however. However, the people who dwell in that land are strong, and the cities are fortified, and they're very large. And besides, somebody saying besides. Not only do we have a however, but now we have a besides. Besides, we saw the descendants. Here it is. We saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of Negev. The Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites, all these mosquito bites, excuse me, these Canaanites, we got a lot of ites right here, they dwell in the hill country and they are along the sea and along the Jordan. So what are they saying? They're saying, man, you got to see these descendants of Anak, they're everywhere. Along with them, all these Hittites and Canaanites and Jebusites, everywhere you go, they're all over the land. They possess the land. Verse number 30, but Caleb quieted the people. Enough's enough. I've heard enough negative. I've heard enough. I've heard, uh, be quiet. That's all I want to hear for now. He quieted the people before Moses and he said, let us go up at once and occupy it for we are all well able to overcome it. Then the men who had gone up with him said, uh, no, 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 no. You we're not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we are. So they brought the people of Israel a bad report of the land that they had spied out saying, the land through which we've gone to spy it out is a land that devours its inhabitants and all the people that we saw in it are of great height. And there we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak who come from the Nephilim and we seem to ourselves like grasshoppers 
And so we seemed to them. Look up here at me. I hope you understand when I speak of revival, I'm not talking about, as I said earlier, I'm not talking about good services once or twice a week that last a couple of hours. When I'm talking tonight and tomorrow night about revival, I'm not even talking about what we're doing tonight from 7 to 9 o'clock or whatever. I'm talking about when I speak of revival, about God delivering a region. I'm talking about a revival that turns a community upside down. It's the kind of revivals I read about in the Bible where God turns cities, Pastor Carl, upside down. When I speak about revival tonight, friend, I'm talking about a move of God that shakes a region. How many of you believe God can shake the town of Humansville? How many of you believe He can shake the, the state of Missouri. Can God shake the United States of America? You see, the spirit of Amek has touched the church in such a way that most of us don't even pray for revival in America because we've done given up on America. That is a challenge to revival that we must overcome. Hear me today. It doesn't matter how dry church is. You've got to overcome the spirit of Amek and say so we're going to put for revival. It doesn't matter the direction this city and this state goes in. We're not going to give up on our state because revival is more than just what we did on Sunday night, April 25th. But revival is something God did tonight that affected our entire town. It affected this entire region. My God, can he send it? Can they drive up from Springfield? Can they drive down from other town? Can there be a revival where you have have to extend your parking lot where you have to get here early to get a seat because they're lined up at the door. Hear me, there is a spirit of Anak that says, no way, that's impossible. But I've come to say, God is able to do it again in these last days. Oh, hallelujah. But see, before God does what I'm talking about, before God delivers a region, he must first deliver his revivalist who are underground and sometimes overwhelmed by intimidation and despondency. Can I preach this tonight? There are Christians, I meet them all the time, who say they want revival, but they remain in dead churches. I meet them all the time. Oh, we'd love, I'd love to be over there where God's moving like that. I'm hungry. I've had them say to me, when I go to church, they haven't had an altar call in 10 years. I'm sorry. But if you go without calling people to the altar one or two weeks, I'm done. I got people say, oh, we'd love to have revival, but they stay in churches where the pastors have said there are to be no gifts of the Spirit in operation on Sunday morning. No tongues, no interpretation. Why? Because it could offend, hear me, Spirit of Anak. Hear me, this is the giant spirit that you've got to overcome when you're fighting to sustain revival. Oh, you can have your gifts of the Spirit, but keep them in a back room somewhere. People say to me all the time they want revival, they want a move of God, but they're willing, or they, but, but they stay in their dead churches. And I've asked the question, why? And here's, I believe, the answer. Because revival is dangerous. Revival is risky. A lot of believers just want to hold on uh -oh, to their old traditions and their old church habits because modern church plays it safe. I wish I'd get somebody to help me tonight. A lot of believers just want to hold on to the way we used to always do it because it's safe the way we always have done it. It's not risky, so they want to hold on to their traditions. But what I've learned about revival is that when God is about to release revival in a region, the enemy comes to conspire you and me to go back to old habits and old religion and old tradition because there's security in our church traditions. In his book, Prepare the Way for Revival by N. Malins, he said, and I quote, from a safe distance of 100 miles, or a hundred years, 
Revival clearly looms exciting and wonderful. The strange thing about revivals, however, is that while they are so longed for in times of barrenness, they are often op op opposed and feared when they arrive. Why? Because revival is threatening. See, what revival does, Life Church, is it disturbs the established order of things. And when it begins to disturb, hear me, revival will disturb your order of service. Revival will disturb the way you do church. It, I'm telling you, in seven years, we've had the most disturbance in the last six months. Because God wrecked me in October of last year, and we came back, and in January of this year, we made changes in our church I didn't think I'd ever make. Because we have, we have literally, this year, we are building everything around two things in our church. Revival and prayer. And if it can't be built around them two things, we don't do it anymore. We don't have programs just to have programs. If our programs aren't Holy Ghost powered push, then we're not going to have the program. Are you hearing me today? We've shut down kids ministry on Wednesday nights because God said, I want all the kids in the sanctuary and I want Wednesday night to be a prayer service and I want you to teach the kids how to pray. You come to our church now, it wasn't this way a year ago. It hasn't even been this way six months. Over the last couple months, revivals hit our kids and on a Wednesday night push service, it's nothing to see them lined up across the front seeking God with everything inside of them. Hear me today. They can't sit back and color forever. They can't sit back and watch puppets. Our kids are grown up more than they were. We're still trying to give them a puppet show that worked when I was a kid. It doesn't work today. We are in a different world. Are you hearing me? If it worked, then why do 80% of our Assembly of God kids, when they go off to college, they backslide. Many of them become atheists. They quit serving Jesus. Why? We've not prepared them. So God says, raise up warriors. Raise up intercessors. Teach them when they're little kids. Oh, my word. Can I speak in the DNA tonight, church? I don't know if this will help you tonight, but where you're going, it's going to help you. It's going to help this church where you're headed. I feel that with everything inside of me. So it, dis it disturbs the established order of things. And it brings conflict. Revival does. It brings fear. It brings division. I know y'all don't like that. You're not amen to me now. It even brings opposition from Christians, from believers. Revival brings the heat into the spirit realm. Oh. The spiritual warfare that comes with revival, pastor, it weeds out the wannabes from the history makers. It, oh, we can sing about it, talk about it all day long, but when it hits, it weeds out. The, the spiritual warfare weeds out the wannabes from the ones who change history. Revival brings a tornado that blows in the face of religious traditions and flesh. Revival, oh, oh yes, revival is intended to change the way church is done. Any time you study history, when God sends a revival, it was His intention to change the way church is done. But see, a lot of people in our churches today still trying to get back to normal. Oh, I'll just be glad when we can get back to normal. Can I give you a word from the Lord? Normal is not coming back. Normal is not coming back. I had someone say to me, said, oh, I just wish we get back to church, get back to 2019, back to when things were normal. I said, wait a minute. Back when they were normal, the average church attendee attended church about 50% of the time. I don't care about getting back to that. I said, I don't care about getting back to that. That's not what I'm after. But when God sends revival, he sends it to change the way church is done. Now, by nature, stay with me. By nature, most of us avoid conflict at any cost. Amen? We don't like it. We don't want to face it. But the conflict of the spiritual realm coming against revival, friend, is real. The conflict that's going to come against this house after tonight is very real. But we don't pray like it's real. We don't worship like it's real. We don't preach like it's real. We don't get in the altars and go after God like it's real. Come on. I said it's real. 
And when we avoid the conflicts of darkness, all we are left to do is sit back and watch anti-revival forces destroy our church, destroy our nation. Now let me get to the spirit of Anak. In Numbers 13, the Israelites were standing at the edge of the promised land. And they are staring at its fruit, only to back down because of the descendants of Anak. They're staring at the fruit, but they're not ready to go take a hold of it and step into the promise because of these descendants of Anak called the Anakim. That sounds like a lot of us, church. I said it sounds like a lot of us. A lot of people I preach to, they want the fruit of revival. Oh, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. I mean, think about the fruit of revival. I could preach right now and y'all shout me down if I started talking about this house being filled with sinners getting saved. Not a person in this, but everybody here wants to see that. Oh, you all want to see it. We all want to see the fruit of revival. People being saved, healed, delivered. Our churches filling up with the power of God. The moving of the Spirit. Come on, somebody. But how often do we back down because of the Spirit of Anak? How often do we back down because of Anak that comes and says, wait a minute, you can't have a move of God like that. The spirit of Anak that stands between us and the move of God. The Anakim were incredibly huge people that, that uh, they would have made Shaquille O'Neal, Shaq, look like a dwarf. They were giants. The spirit of Anak, if you're taking notes, write this down. It neutralizes your warfare by causing you to lose proper perspective and to settle for less. I'm going to say that again. The spirit of Anak neutralizes your warfare by causing you to lose proper perspective and to settle for less. Pastor, what do you mean? We see giants instead of God. Yep, we see giants instead of God. We see grasshoppers instead of God's greatness. We lapse for business as normal instead of breakthrough mode. We just kind of just start going through the motions in church. I've been telling our people not one service is a throwaway service. Not one service. Every service has an assignment. Every service has a purpose. But we come in and because the atmosphere is not just right or they're not singing our favorite song or we just don't feel all that great or we had a long week, we're tired this, we're that, we just sit back and we flow into business as normal. No sir, no ma'am, hear me today. I am not going to settle. I am not going to back down. Many of us in the church, we have fallen into survival mindset. We need to get back into revival mindset. Hallelujah. We've lost our purpose. And once the spirit of Anak takes root in your life, you'll start to lose that vision. You'll start to lose that DNA revival that we're talking about tonight. I mean, think about it. The promised land represented the fullness of the Lord's promise. It represented uh, generations to come. It represented an inheritance for future generations. But they said, nah, we'll just stay here. Nah, we'll just stay back here. I mean, we, we, see, we see the promise and, and we see what it represents. We see revival. We see an inheritance for future generations. Listen, you want to see your kids serve Jesus, raise them up in a revival church. No wonder so many of them backslide when they're raised up in a dead church. No wonder they backslide when they've sat on the pew their whole life hearing about miracles, but they've never seen one. Hearing about baptism in the Spirit and the power of God, but never experiencing it. Hello? Revival will affect future generations. 
when the revival that God has in store it comes down in this, in this community, I'm going to tell you, it will affect your kids and your grandkids and if the Lord tells you, your great-grandkids. It will go for future. But no, 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 we're going to just settle. We're going to settle. We're going to just stay back here. We're going to play it safe because uh, there's too many challenges. It's too hard. It's a fight. It requires a push. Oh, I'm preaching tonight. What kind of territory is God calling this church to take a hold of in this season? What kind of revival are you believing God for? What kind of move of God is this church expecting God to do? Because revival, hear me, is not for the faint of heart. It's counterculture. But God is raising up an army. And He's doing it tonight. He's raising up a church. He's raising up a body of believers who will go against culture. Who will go against the spirit of Amen. Who will say revival is an act of war. That's the army He's calling. So it said in Numbers, in, in our passage there, chapter 13, verse 30, it says that, that, that Caleb quieted the people. Uh, he says, I've heard enough negative. Turn CNN off. And while you're all at it, shut Fox News down too. I have people come up to me all the time and say, oh, did you hear what they said on Fox News? Did you hear what the Senate did this last week? Bless God, did you? And I'll tell you, I can only take so much of that. Hear me today. I don't know what you're listening to all day long. I don't know how big the giants are that you're hearing about or that you're seeing, but I choose to believe the report of the Lord. I don't care who's in the White House. I don't care how the Senate votes. I don't care how the House votes. I'm going to see the great this revival that's ever been sent because I still believe it is for the last days. It's for you. It's for me. I don't care what the naysayers are saying. God has sent me tonight to lay hands on you and impart the spirit of Caleb that will say, quiet down, Anak. Quiet down, descendants of this giant. Quiet down, naysayers. It is time we go and we take the promise that he's given us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've got to break the spirit of intimidation. We've got to break the spirit of Anak in our churches today and impart the spirit of a revivalist so that you can see right in front of you the territories that God has given you. Oh, hallelujah. You'll drive up and down the streets of this town and see homes coming to Jesus. Souls coming to the Lord. Whoo, my word. I don't know about you. But as for me, I refuse to live intimidated any longer. I refuse, church, I refuse to bow down to the cookie cutter American church that says you got to do it this way. You got to sing it that way. It can only go this long. I refuse to settle for less. I will not embrace another version of knockoff Christianity that the church in America continues to feed the pew. Not going to do it. Because church culture today wants to put you in a line and they want you, they want to say to you, this is how you're to behave. This is how you're to act. This is how church, I don't know what you thought church was going to be. But they want to put you in a line and say, this is how we do church. Listen to me, revivalists. Revivalists get out of the line. Revivalists say, oh yeah, I'm supposed to go that way. I am not a weed shaking in the wind. Y'all all going seeker sensitive and not preaching the cross and not preaching the blood. That's where the church is headed. Y'all go where you want to go. I'm not a weed shaking in the wind. I may be the only one marching this way. I may be the only one still preaching this word. I may be the only one that still wants to see a move of God. But I am getting out of line. I've always been one that colors out of the lines. Drives my girls crazy. Dad, can you stay in the lines? No, it's not in me. I want to live out of the lines. How about you, church? I want to live out of the lines. Because revivalists get out of line 
And they push back because the revival culture demands more. And if you're going to sustain that in your church, you hear this, and I'm going to be nice, and I'm going to quit preaching here in a second. You've got to quit compromising to the religious. Hear me. Don't compromise to keep the religious. I've got news for the religious spirit. I'm not here for you. I'm here for him. Well, I don't like the way you jump and, and holler and praise. And, and, and I hear me. I am not praising you. My jump is not for you. My shout is not for you. My worship is not for you. I'm not here for you. I'm for him. Excuse me. Well, I never seen Jesus acting that way in the Bible. Maybe not. But everyone he sure touched sure did. Everyone he healed sure did. Everyone he delivered sure did. Excuse me. But but I'm not here for you, religious crowd. And if you want to sustain revival in this church, you're going to have to allow the religious crowd to not let the door hit them on their way out. I told you last time, exit is spelled E-X-I-T. Hello. Pastor, that's, that's kind of, you, you're kind of being mean there. You kind of be, no, 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 hear me. Pastor, not everybody will have your vision. But those who have your vision will stay with you. And those who don't will leave. Those who have, how many of you have this man's vision? How many of you have your pastor's vision? You're with them. You're behind them. I know you are. I know you are. You wouldn't be here on a Sunday night revival if you weren't. You're with them. This is all God needs right here. Our God, he, is, he, he majors in taking something like this and doing something big and mighty out of it. You know why? You know why? Because I had this vision of a revival in Little Rock. And on my first Sunday, I turned around and I looked to all them grandmas and grandpas, that small crowd that was there on that first Sunday. And I thought, oh God, what did I get myself into? You must have punished me. I was pastoring a large church and you sent me to Arkansas to pastor this tiny church. What have I done? And here's what I heard the Lord said. He said, what I'm going to do here, no man will be able to take glory for. You'll always look back on this day and remember what you started with. And you'll remember that it was not in your strength, but it was in mine, saith the Lord. I want you to know, he don't need much. He doesn't need a lot. He just needs a people who will say, here we are. Here we are, Lord. Here we are. But I'm not going to settle down to keep the religious crowd feel at ease. I understand not everyone's going with me. I'm speaking this into the DNA tonight of Life Church because I want you to understand this. It's okay to be different. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're different. We all knew it anyhow. I don't know if I told you, but I'm telling you now. You're different. Can I say this to us? It may not sound theological, but we've got to get this. It's time to break the mold. It's time to break Life Church, the cookie cutter mold of what church looks like, what church should be. Somebody shout, break the mold. Break the mold. Break the mold. When visitors walk through these doors, my Lord, I hope they walk through and go, now that's different. I hope they come in and they say, I hear me, I don't want them to go to the Baptist last week, the Methodist two weeks ago, the Presbyterian three weeks ago, the Catholic four weeks ago, and come into Life Church and go, well, Life Church reminds me a lot of the Baptist Church. I love Baptist. I am Baptist. My baby book says I am a Baptist. So I tell people all the time, I'm a Baptist. Amen. I have Assembly God credentials, but I'll hang with all of them. We're all going to heaven together. I'm not against them, but I want you to know there's something different about revival. There's something different about being Pentecostal. And if they're going into all of our other churches and they walk in here and there's nothing different, then we're just filling the mold. I say break the mold. Break the mold. You know why? Because I want when they walk through these doors, I want them to say, man, I didn't know there was a church like this in our town. I didn't know there was, I didn't know there was a revival like this in our town. I'm closing with this. I'm finishing for real with this. The spirit of Anak, don't tempt me, brother. He said, keep going. I said, don't tempt me. I got five of these spirits. I can do another one, but I ain't, I ain't. I want to pray. This is the direction. If you didn't hear anything else tonight, you hear this right here. We're talking about overcoming the challenges to a revival culture. 
dealing with the spirit of Anak, the spirit of intimidation, this this giant spirit that says you gotta, you can't be that way, uh, you can't, it, you're weird, you're strange, you you need to calm down. <laughs> Here's what the last thing I want to say before we pray. The spirit of Anak, and I've said it, but I want, you to, I want you to understand it now. The spirit of Anak, yes, it causes you to lose your purpose, lose your focus. What are we here for? All those things we've talked about. But the purpose, the spirit of Anak wants you to settle. I said we talked about it a minute ago. They're, on the, they're, they're, they're looking in going, man, well, I think we'll just hang out here. Well, we, don't want to, we don't want to deal with that. We'll just stay out here in the desert. But when, when the Lord was putting this message together, I felt led to just look up what the word settle means. And there's three definitions to settle. And when I read them, I said, wow, wow, wow. Number one, settle means to place as to stay. To place as to stay. Say it again. To place as to stay. What that means is what we've talked about so far. This is good enough. To settle means I'm just going to stay right here. You will not sustain revival personally nor individually anytime you go in neutral. Because with God, there's not a neutral. You're either in reverse or you're going forward. And the minute you say, pastors do it all the time. The pew does it all the time. They say, wow, it's a powerful move of God. This is enough. And they, to place as to stay. We like it right here. They settle. The pew settles. This is enough of God. I got my little family here. Just happy kids are here. We're going to heaven. And they settle. They settle to place us to stay. Doesn't matter if my neighbors are going to hell. My family's here. You know, everything's good. I like it the way it is. To place us to stay. The settling spirit has to be broken in the church if we're going to see the great move of God in these last days. We've got to tonight determine that we are not going to settle. I'm not going to stay where I'm at. I'm not going to say this is good enough. It happens all the time. Second definition for settle. Settle means to make quiet or orderly. Wow. <laughs> to make quiet or orderly. You know what the spirit of Anak will do? It will hinder your praise. The spirit of Anak will cause you to settle. It will cause you to say, you need to quiet down. You know, you're, you're, you, need to, you need to just listen. You need to, I'll tell you what. When God sends this church musicians and singers, y'all are going to blow the roof off of this place. Because, I'm not kidding you. I preach places where they have the most talented, anointed people on the platform, and you can't get a person out there to lift their hands. They're sitting there, got all that talent up there. People lead them in worship, and you turn around, look at them, they're like drinking their Starbucks. When's this going to end? Come on, move to the next song. They just, they don't care. They've settled. I come here to Life Church, I'm standing there. Y'all are singing songs off a of DVD or whatever, YouTube. Words on a screen. Not a person on the platform. And all I hear behind me is the sound of hunger, the sound of praise. I looked around. I saw hands up all over this place. I want you to understand tonight. When you, when, you're going to blow the roof off. The, the worship is high now. When you get praise and worship up here, you will literally blow the roof off of this place. The spirit of Anak wants to quiet you. It wants to hinder you. But I've come to say, I will not say. Revival has a sound. Church has been quiet too long. People say, I get nervous when they all get loud. I get nervous when they get quiet. The only places that should be quiet are funerals. Church shouldn't be quiet. I heard your testimonies. I thought, my Lord, what are we even doing here tonight? They've all already been healed, touched, filled. Glory to God, all of them. Ears popping open. 
For, forget the miracle service Tuesday night. We already got ears popping open. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking, my Lord, these people here tonight are not settling. Revival has a sound. When it gets quiet, that ought to make you nervous. Because quiet, y'all say, I hope you're not bothered by the babies. A church that ain't crying is a church that's dying. I don't care about the noise. Let there be the sound of babies. Let there be the sound of worship. Let there be the sound of praise. Revival has a sound. And last, number three, settle means to close by payment often less than is due. To close by payment often of less than is due. If I'm in a lawsuit with you, and you owe me a million dollars according to me, and we're going to go to court and the jury's going to decide whether or not you owe me a million dollars, then you come to me the day before court and you say this, hey, would you like to settle for 750000 by the way, if any of you want to settle for 750000 <laughs> <Amen. laughs> Hallelujah. How often do we do that in the church? We settle for often less. Less. Not tonight. If you take this message... If you take what I preach to you tonight and from this day forward you take that spirit of Anak that challenge to revival and you say no -uh, not on my watch we're breaking the mold we're not losing our focus we will not settle we are going to seek him and push for revival in such a way that when people walk through these doors, they'll say, man, there's something different about that place. There is something different about that place. If you will overcome through the power of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of Anak, and refuse to settle, when we see each other again, if the Lord has that on His calendar, we'll look back to this night and call it a night that shifted things. That brought the greater move of God that we all desire for in Humansville, Missouri. Amen? Stand to your feet and give the Lord a praise as you're standing. Come on. Make a sound tonight. Make a sound of praise in the house. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands and say, I will not settle. I will not settle. I want more, Lord. That's what revival is. It's more. It's more. It's more. It's saying we thank you for what you did this morning. We thank you for what you did last month with the revival we had. But we want more. We want more. We want more. Oh, yes, Holy Spirit. As you're standing all over this building, I, I want to say to you tonight that... John the Baptist, man, he was a different character, wasn't he? Guy got honey and wild locusts and just, you know, just out in the wilderness. Yeah, I mean, just can you imagine what the, the boy looked like? What he smelt like? What he acted like? But the Lord is saying tonight, he's going to change what you're attracted to. He's going to change what you're attracted to. God's going to, there's going to be an attraction to the wilderness you've not had before. There's going to be an attraction that says, you know what? I'm not a reed shaken by the wind. An attraction that says, I'd rather be out in the wilderness with a move of God than in a cathedral with no move of God. I'd rather pastor 20 people hungry for God than 2,000 people who's looking at their clock thinking, just get me out of church. He will change your attraction. He will change your hunger. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. So the assignment tonight. We got some music. Can we just start softly put that on? I know there's hungry people tonight. I just finished preaching to you. I know you're hungry tonight. Oh, Lord, I feel this. 
This is what I sense. This is the assignment to lay hands, lay hands on you and impart. Jesus said, freely as you've received, freely give. Impart the Spirit. I'm not talking about a Spirit. I'm talking about the anointing, the power of Elijah, of John the Baptist. It's the promise that that Spirit of Elijah will come back in the last days. And Jesus said, matter of fact, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. But the intense ones, the hungry ones, they take it by force. I'm not backing down. I'm going to take it by force. Come on, somebody. Here's what I want to do right now. Pastor, First Lady, I want you to come stand right here. I just feel led to do this tonight. Come up here. Let me step back. Get up just as yeah, close as you can there. I want to ask tonight, if you're in this place, this is to home folk first. We'll get everybody in this altar that wants to be in it tonight. But to home folk, this is your church. This is where you go on Sunday mornings. This is home. If you have the vision of your pastor, if you're behind this couple, if you're with them, if you are willing to say, we will, with you, pastor, overcome the spirit of Anak. We're going to overcome this challenge to revival and see a move of God in our community. Don't know how long it's going to take. Don't know the warfare we're going to have to face. But I, pastor, am not a reed shaken by the wind. I'm not going to quit and give up and leave just when it gets hard. I am with you. As long as the Lord has you here, I have your back. I am with you in war. Because I told you earlier, revival is war. This is your home. And you've got their vision. I want you to come. Young and old alike, come and just surround them. If you can't stand long, try to come and get on a front row and sit. I want you to just come and just fill the altar. I know you're not all going to be able to touch them, but I... I want you to get in. Oh, this is it right here. This is it right here. Now the rest of you, as these home folk are coming, if you would say, Pastor, I'm ready to overcome this spirit in my own life. I've been seeing giants. I've been believing I'm a grasshopper. I'm a nothing. I want you to get in this altar with the rest of them. Just everybody here tonight, if you want to get in this altar, I think everybody here is saved tonight. Most everybody's already in the altar. I don't need to give a salvation altar call. That's not the direction. Here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to lay hands on your pastor. I'm going to lay hands on your pastor. And we're going to pray for your pastors. I want you to pray with me as we pray. But then after we pray for them, I want you to throw your hands up, church. And I want you to ask God to anoint you with the spirit of Elijah, the spirit of John the Baptist tonight. I want you to ask him for an intensity that you've not stepped into yet. I'm talking about an intensity that says, I am going to take hold of the kingdom of God. I'm taking hold of revival, and there's nothing going to stop me. We're going to pray, and we're going to lay hands on everybody tonight, and that's what he's going to do in this place. He's going to do it tonight. He's going to do it tonight. We've got a breakthrough tonight. Tonight. Amen. Church, we've got to break the mold tonight. We've got to say, I'm not going to be normal again. It's okay to be different. It's okay to be different. I'm not going to be normal again. Start lifting up your voice and praying for your pastor right now. Come on, before I pray for him, I want to hear you pray for him. Oh, pastor, you've got a mighty army standing behind you tonight. Everybody in this church that calls this their home is here with you in this altar right now. You have a hundred percent. This is what you have. I don't know who was here this morning that's not here tonight. That's okay. I don't know who left you a year ago. That's okay. But you have an army tonight. You have an army standing with you tonight. And we're laying our hands on you. And we're praying in the name of Jesus for more in your life. We will not settle for less. We are not settlers. God, I pray that you will raise up within this couple, this power couple, these revivals 
evilest, God. These forerunners, God, that you will raise them up as trailblazers in this community, God. Oh, they will be forerunners of revival. They will walk in the anointing of John the Baptist and Elijah. They will declare, oh, he's coming. Make way. Make way for the kingdom of God. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that they will run with everything inside of them, God. For there is an army that's following. God, when they say shout, you've given them a people who will shout. When they say go, you've given them an army that will go. When they say it's time to pray, you've given them an army of prayer warriors, God. So, Lord, give them the voice of revival to speak into this region. Lord, I'm not talking about a few services once a month or once a week or even a few times a year. I'm talking about something that will turn this community upside down. Lord, I know there's giants saying it's impossible. There's giants saying it'll never happen. But we rebuke the spirit of Anak right now and we release the spirit of Elijah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, In the name of Jesus right now. Right now. Right now. God, I pray, Lord, for a revivalist mantle. Oh, a mantle of revival, God. Yes, carry it. Carry it. Carry it. The assignment is on your shoulders. Carry it. Carry it. You don't have to carry it alone for his yoke is easy and his burden is light you don't have to carry it alone and it's not a heavy heavy burden sometimes the assignment feels heavy oh but the lord is in that he is in that yoke with you so lord anoint these forerunners in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Come on, pray for your pastors right now. Pray for your pastors. Pray for your pastors. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, forerunner anointing God. Do it, Lord. Do it right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, I want everybody in this altar just take a step back or to your side. Make a little room in the altar. And now lift up your hands. I want to pray for you. I want you to begin just praying right now. For right now, I want you to come against that settling spirit. Come on. Come on. I can't pray for you, church. I need you to pray right now. Let's lift that music up a little bit. Just give them some music. Hallelujah. Yes, just spread out a little bit. In the name of Jesus. 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 Come on. Begin to cry out to him right now. Come on. Begin to lift up the sound of revival. Begin to say we will not settle. Come on. I need somebody to say break the mold with me, Lord. Break the mold with me. Come on, somebody has been playing it safe. You've been secure. Oh, but God says it's not time to play it safe anymore. It's not time to hold on to old traditions anymore. It's time to chase him and pursue him in the name of Jesus. Holy, 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 holy. Come on, pray. Pray, 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 pray. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, right now, Lord.
Come on, stretch your hands right over the head of this man. Stretch your hands over this man. Oh, the Lord can use what he's brought you through for his glory. He can use you to turn a community upside down. He can use it. He can use it. He's going to use it for his glory. God, you are not finished with him. There is more. There is more in the name of Jesus. I pray for a revivalist anointing. I pray, God, that you will give him a backbone. God, that you will give him the voice of Elijah and the voice of John the Baptist crying out in the wilderness. Oh, God, that you will put on him a mantle in the name of Jesus of a carrier of the glory, a carrier of revival. The Lord's going to use you. The Lord's going to use you. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Touch them tonight. Touch them tonight. Right now in the name of Jesus. We cry out for more. We cry out for more. Come on, church. Come on. How desperate are you? How desperate are you tonight, church? Cry out for more. We're hungry for more. He's doing it tonight, young man. He's doing it right now. That's it. More a little. I know that hungry people are desperate people. I'm telling you, you give me, you, I, I don't go too long without food before I get hangry. You know what I mean, hangry. I've seen people at buffets, man, they just pig out because they're hungry. Hungry people act different than, full, than people that are full. When you're full, you, you, you don't, you're not hungry. You know, you're like, oh, I don't want that. When I'm full, you can put a chocolate pie in front of me. And I'm like, man, I'm full. I can't. Some, my grandma used to do that. I'd be like, give me a minute. I'm full right now. I can't eat it. But hungry people, they eat different than full people. They don't care. They get it on their shirt. They get it all over them, dripping down their face. Hungry people act different. Come on, throw your hands up and let a hunger sound. Let a growl. Yes. Let a hunger sound. Fill this room. Come on, let the growl. Fill this room. Come on, there's a sound to hunger. There's a sound to hunger. Hunger has a sound. There's a growling in the spirit tonight that says I'm not satisfied with just what I had this morning. I want more. Fill your people with more tonight. We will not settle.
Lift up your hands, church. Lift up your hands. His glory is here. His glory is here. His glory is here tonight. In the name of Jesus. Oh, your glory is here. Your glory. Take it, sis. Fire, 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 fire. Holy, holy, holy. Hey, we worship you, Lord. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Church, this is it. This is where we go to new levels, right here. You are at that point where you have to make a decision. Do I settle with this or do I step over the threshold? We are at a threshold moment right now. And I feel like our church is stepping over. Step over the threshold. I want more, God. Warfare is coming, Pastor, but God's putting a spirit, a new power on your people. That when, when, that, when those descendants, when, the, when those descendants of Amen show up to say, you got to stop. There's a new anointing coming on your people, Pastor. They're going to fight like they've never fought before. They're going to intercede. I know this is a praying church, but there's going to be a new anointing on the intercession here. Oh, it's on the intercession. Hey! Sakata shatakaha. Yay! Alona Maka. Raise up intercessors. Raise up intercessors. Raise them up tonight, God. In the name of Jesus. More Lord, more Lord. Oh, holy God. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy music. Let's you got another song music. Hallelujah. You still leading that women's thing? You still doing that? Amen. Y'all teaching and praying in there? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes, warriors. I know that. Uh, come here. I want to lay hands on you. Lift up your hands. You are instrumental to the DNA of a revival church. You, your ministry is, is so vital because you're teaching people how to pray. The only thing the disciples ever asked Jesus to teach them, out of all the things they seen him do, brother, they never said, teach us how to cast out demons. They never said, teach us how to heal the sick. The only thing they ever asked is, teach us how to pray. And I believe the reason is because they connected the dots. They saw him get up in the morning, or they woke up and seen him gone, praying in solitude. And he would spend hours in prayer. But then they would go into the marketplace, and he would heal the sick in one second. And they said, he heals the sick, and it only takes a second. But he spends hours in prayer. And they connected the dots. So Lord, help us connect the dots. That when we learn to pray, we're going to see things happen. I know you are a praying church, and I know there's praying women here that are in your ministry. I knew it last time, I knew it this time. But here's what I feel like the Lord's saying. Another level. Prayer. Prayer is going to be the forerunner. It's going to be the, it's going to be what opens the door to the next move of God here in the greater measure. So as this prayer leader stands in this altar before you, Lord, I pray for a fresh anointing on her. A fresh anointing. Fresh intercession, oh God. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise, let prayers arise. God, wake them up in the middle of the night. Wake them up at four in the morning. God, give them a mighty army of intercessors here at Life Church. 
give them an, oh yes, may prayer be the most important thing they do here. May it be more important than anything else that's done at Life Church. In the name of Jesus, prayer is where it's at. I lay hands on you and I say fresh anointing of the Holy Ghost. Come on, Holy Ghost. I pray you put it on her with a greater measure in the next. I felt that. I felt that. He's going to do something great through you. He's going to do something great through this intercession here. And these warriors, these women warriors. But men, don't let the women lead. You got to be the leaders. You got to be the spiritual leaders. Oh, we're in it together. Hallelujah. 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 We lift you up, Lord. We lift you up right now, Jesus. Oh, I feel the anointing tonight. I feel his power tonight. I feel his presence tonight. I feel his glory tonight. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way, Spirit of God. Glorify your name in all the earth. Glorify your name in all the earth. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, sir. Come on, one more time. Can we just slip up our hands and love on him tonight? Just love on him, praise him, exalt him, worship him. Worship the Lord tonight. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, O God. Glory to your name, O God. We love you. We worship you, Lord. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Bring that down just a little bit. Bring that music down and let's lift our voices. Let's lift up a sound before we go home tonight. Come on, just praise him and exalt him and worship him. Love on him. It's the sound of heaven. Love on him tonight. Oh, we love on you tonight, Lord. We love on you tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you are determined you're not going to settle? Amen. We're going to break the mold. We're going to break the mold. Yes, the mold's already being broken. Hallelujah. Tomorrow night, we're going to hit some more. And it's going to be different. It's going to be totally different. Wear your shoes that are hard on the toes tomorrow night. Okay, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding you. I told you I felt different direction. Usually as an evangelist, when you come to preach revival, you really come wide open because you, you, you want to minister to guests and anybody and everybody. So the message is you're, you're, they hit anybody. But I just kept feeling that the Lord wanted to speak into the DNA of this church these two nights. And then Tuesday night, call everybody you know. Get them here for miracle service. We're going to see miracles in this place. I believe it. Amen. Pastor? Oh, yeah, but this is, I got a battery now. Hey, have a seat for just a, just a quick second. I want to I wanna share a couple things that ran through my mind as Pastor Dwayne was preaching tonight. And I, won't, I, I promise I won't keep you long. But uh, I've said for years and years and years, I'll take a church of 100 people that are hungry for God over a church of 10,000 people that are just there for a show. Amen. And uh, so I'm, I'm excited about what God is doing. A uh, couple things here. Uh, I've said uh, all along that uh, there are several other churches in town that do it their way. And I appreciate you, brother. I'm, I've, I, we support the other, other ministries in this town and, uh, the, and the work that they're doing. And we pray for them and, and ask God to use them in mighty ways. But uh, a couple, two or three years ago, I spent some time praying, and I said, God, I need to know what life church is supposed to look like according to your will and your plan. And, and, and I, I, otherwise, you, you just, as a pastor, you just chase everything and do nothing. 
And I said, God, I got to I got to know what life church looks like. And this is a this is the start of it. This is the start of it. And 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 it's okay if if you if you prefer to sing out of a songbook. There there are six or seven other churches in town that will be happy to oblige and that's that's absolutely fine. If 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 you don't if you're not comfortable with the move of the Spirit, there are six or seven other churches in town that will be happy to uh, oblige, you know. But this is who we are, and, and that's okay. And it's not, I'm not speaking ill against the other churches. I'm, this is who God made us, and we're going to move in that. The last thing I want to say, brother, because... we. It, it, I catch in my my you know you home folks you know I catch myself sometimes indirectly apologizing for the videos that we use for music and uh, now let, let me finish let me finish let me finish and, and and somebody hit the nail on the head a couple years ago and they said in his timing he will give you singers and musicians but maybe right now, for this season, he wants you to focus on him instead of somebody standing on the stage. And let me tell you what, that transformed everything. And uh, so I, we are, yeah, it makes me think of Marshall, we are Life Church, right? And, 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 and this, is just, this is just the breaking open of the seal of what is yet to come. Amen. Thank you, brother, for, for pouring into us and uh, being sensitive to what God would have you speak to us. You do not know. When you start talking about offense, <laughs> have we heard that anywhere lately? <laughs> have we had folks come against us? Yeah. And he, he spoke the truth. I've had people that attended here, and they said, Pastor, you can't do it like that. Well, I'll, I'll take it up with God, but he's been telling me different. <laughs> so until he, well, uh, brother so-and-so would roll over in his grave if he knew what you were doing in his building. As far as I know, this is God's building. And this is what he's told us to do. And here's what happened. They, and I, I told Margo, I said, they will either buy into the vision that God has given us or they will move. And, and, Sometimes it's been a little bit of an uncomfortable season, but they've moved. They've gone on to somewhere else because God has a plan and a purpose for the way he's doing things right here. Amen. Thank you, brother, for, for pouring your heart out. I'm glad your voice is better. You know, uh, I mean, it's, it's not even 9 o'clock yet, and I was thinking it was just about time for altar call, you know. We're, we're, you got that second one ready? <laughs> hey, uh, we're going we're gonna to let you go tonight. I will pray for you. Uh, remember, tomorrow night at 7, and uh, don't, don't miss it. Tuesday night, 7, be here. And, and, you know, he said he needs several more nights. Brother, I was just trying to respect your church, and, and so that's why I have you in on Sunday night and let you go Tuesday so you can, but you're welcome to stay as long as the Lord would have you to stay. So uh, we, we may have to talk about, make some plan for the future. So, all right, let's pray. God, thank you for meeting with us tonight. Thank you for the encouragement that you've brought to us as your church. And uh, Lord, I pray tonight that you will seal the work that you have begun in us. Lord, may we not become complacent or settle for uh, what was or what could have been or what used to be. But God, will you stir up in us a, a hunger for, for what you have for us, what still lies ahead, what your plan and purpose is. And the Lord, help us to be sensitive to your spirit as you lead us in that direction. I uh, pray you bless each person. Keep them safe as they travel home tonight. In your name we pray, amen and amen. God bless you. Have a good night.